I have moved about this world of ours, and ever in search of the finest of its kind, we bring you the tops in Spine Chillers. <laughs> Creaking door. The manufacturers of State Express 3-5's Filter King cigarettes take pleasure in presenting The Creaking Door. <laughs> dummy, but he isn't, or at least I don't think he is. Perhaps we'd better find out before the curtain goes up. <laughs> Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new, smooth, State Express 3.5s today. Turpin's a fabulous ventriloquist. Oh, just listen to that applause. Yes. But he's not the best we ever had, not by a long way. Yes, I've been manager here for over 20 years, you know. I've seen him come and go. <laughs> but the best ventriloquist, the greatest act I ever saw in my life, that was Bertini. He was an Italian, spoke broken English. But oh, what an act. Find the way I first met him. He came into my office on, uh, I think, uh, yes, it was Wednesday morning. Came bursting in here, he did, with the dummy on his arm. First I thought he was joking. Then I realized he was deadly serious. <laughs> this man here. I refuse to share a dressing with him any longer. I insist that you arrange. We have two dressing rooms. Who? Who are you talking about? What man? This man here on my arm. He's no good. Can't even walk for himself. I've got to carry him everywhere. This the one I can't stand any more than nonsense. Now, what are you talking about? Here, you don't mean that dummy, do you? Of course I mean the dummy. That's what he is. A dummy. Gino here, my partner in the act. I can't stand it any longer. The arguments. Every night he comes into the dressing room, he fights with me. He argues with me. I want a separate dressing room. I refuse to dress in the same room as these little peep squeaks. Now listen, listen, now listen, Bertini. <laughs> Look, you expect me to believe now, listen, that's just a dummy. He can't argue with you. He can't speak unless you speak for him. I think perhaps you're um, hitting the bottle a bit too hard, eh? Isn't that it? 
Oh, I've, I've got, no, I've got no complaints. I mean, far from it. Your act's certainly bringing him in, but, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, that's just a dummy. He's made of wood and papier-mâché. Now, look, uh, but here, you just take things easy, eh? So, you think I'm drunk? You think I'm mad? I tell you, this swine here, this dummy, you say, he makes my life a misery. Are you going to give me the other dressing room? Oh, of course you can have another dressing room. You can have ten if you want to. Thank you, thank you. Now then, you know good Gino. Are you satisfied? So you won't answer. You also want the manager to think that I'm too much with the drink. You little troublemaker. One day, one day I will kill you. I tell you that for sure. Dummy, you no dummy. One day, I kill you. Well, I ask you, have you ever heard anything like that? You see, well, as you no doubt know, but just in case you don't, a ventriloquist has his dummy, usually with a carved wooden face and hinged jaw. The ventriloquist himself operates this jaw and the turning of the dummy's head and so on by controls in the back of the dummy. And as for the voice, well, it's a ventriloquist himself, of course. He pitches his own voice a little higher. He speaks without moving his mouth or throat and he throws his voice. He, he projects it so that it sounds as if it's coming from somewhere else and not from him. But it's him all the time. And that's what made me think that Bettini was hitting the bottle too hard. I mean, when it comes to imagining things like that, well, I ask you. Anyway, I, uh, I gave him another dressing room for the doll, and the next day he was very much happier. Or he seemed to be much happier. Ah, good morning, senior manager. Benvenuta. How are you this morning? Me? Oh, I'm fine, Bertini. And you? Well, you look a lot happier today. Uh, me? But of course I'm happy. Now at least I can get away from that doll. <laughs> uh, you think I'm mad, eh? But I tell you, I'm not mad. Maybe one day I will be with that doll. He drives me crazy. Yeah? Well... But now everything fine. Now, I put him in the dressing room and he stays there till the show. That's fine. <laughs> now I'm uh, happy. But his happiness didn't last for long. That night after the show, I went backstage to see if everything was all right. And I heard voices coming from Bertini's dressing room. Not the one where he kept his dummy, the second one I'd given him, but his own dressing room. Yes. Voices. Loud and angry voices. At first I thought he was fighting with one of the stagehands. Then I realized he was talking to himself. Pretending to talk with the dummy, Gino, you understand? But really talking to himself. So I stood outside the open dressing room door and, <laughs> and I listened. Well, I've never heard anything like that in, ooh, well, for the whole of my life. Who asked you to come in here, hey? Who asked you? If you don't like me in here, why don't you throw me out, eh? Don't. Don't provoke me, you little monster. I will do that one of these days. <laughs> Talk is cheap. You stick me in that other dressing room and you leave me there all day, all night. You take me back in this dressing room with you. Otherwise, the show does not go on next time. You understand? Oh, shut up, you twisty little monster. You make me sick. You think you can blackmail me like that? I'm not frightened of you. You hear that? I'm not frightened of you. <laughs> you better take care, my friend, Bertini. If anyone were to pass and hear this conversation, they would think you were crazy. <laughs> That's enough from you. I'm telling you for the last time, Gino. If you don't shut up, I... I... I kill you. Up 
till then, I've been sort of humouring Bertini. That night, I watched the act. Well, there was no doubt about it. He was very good. More than that, he was great. Then halfway through the act, I got a surprise. A girl walks on. Yeah, that's right. A girl. Well, I knew nothing about that girl. And of course, as theatre manager, I was supposed to. But she comes trotting on and she starts in taking part in the act. Well, she was nothing to look at, this girl, I can tell you. But then I saw just how brilliant Bertini was. He starts making the dummy Gino flirt with the girl, you know, winking, peering at her over Bertini's shoulder, the whole works. And the while Bertini's pretending to get more and more mad, or at least I thought he was pretending. Anyway, that night, the act went bigger than ever. And after the show, I sent for Bertini to come and see me in my office. So he comes along with the dummy on his arm. And I could see at a glance that something was very wrong. You want to see me? Yes, yes. Sit down, Bertini. Thank you. Now then, uh, I caught your act tonight. Oh, so that's it, <laughs> You saw the girl, I suppose. Yes, that's right. I saw the girl. Now, listen, I'm not complaining. Well, uh, I am. I beg your pardon? Me, I'm a complaining. If that girl goes on tomorrow night, then I don't. Now, <laughs> wait a minute, You Bertie. think that I would change the act without telling you about it? You mean... You mean you didn't know? But how on earth... He, this little evil one, Gino, he did it. Gino? Now, hang on. Go on. Go on. Tell him. Tell him, you little follower of the black one. Tell him. Oh, I see. You see how clever this one is, Mr. Manager. When you are here, he refused to talk. He wants you to think I'm mad. Because that is what he's trying to do. He's trying to drive me out of my mind. Very well. I will tell you. I will tell you what happened. This hunchbacked, watery legged swine, he came to my dressing room last night. Now, look, now wait a minute. Now, how could he come to your dressing room? He can't walk. He comes to my dressing room. To my dressing room. He walks inside. It's not the first time he's done such a thing. Then he tells me that tonight, in the show tonight, this woman must appear. I refuse. I tell him it's impossible. Never. I work only with a doll. No assistants and no women. And she goes on, Betty. She goes on. Otherwise, I don't. What you mean, you don't? What you talk? Of course you go on. That at least I can make sure of. I carry you on myself. So I know that you will go on. Yes. You carry me. But you wouldn't like it if I walked off, or would you? Walked off in front of all these people. You wouldn't like that. And I will do it. Agnes Maria comes on stage in the act tonight. Yeah, you're bluffing. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Yes, I would. I will do it. I will get off your knee and walk on these horrible little legs made of old clothes stuffed with newspaper. I will walk off. So you see, Bertie, my friend, You'd better do as I say. Now, uh, now, wait a minute. Now, hang on, Bertie. Are you trying to tell me that doll, that dummy, could have walked off the stage? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. You think I'm going crazy, but I tell you, it happened before. It happened in Milano before. He threatened to walk off. As he did. That's why I never work in Italy anymore these days. Now, look here, Bertie. Look, you're a nice guy, and I hate to see you getting into this state. Now, what you're saying is quite impossible, you know. You don't believe me. You say I'm lying. No, 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 not at all. I believe that you think you're telling the truth. But what you've been saying is quite impossible. I mean, look at that dummy. Look at it. I mean, it isn't alive. It can't talk to you unless you do the talking, and it can't walk. What you say is impossible. Of course. That is what I should have known you would say. You think I work too hard and maybe drink too hard and I imagine things. This is all your fault, you twist it, little man. Why you no speak to the manager? Why you no tell him I speak the truth, eh? Now, bed, you stupid man. <laughs> Move 
in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. Is it? I mean, would you stand for a dummy speaking to you like that? No wonder poor old Bertie thinks he's losing his marbles. Perhaps he's right. After all, we know that it's impossible for a ventriloquist dummy to speak on its own, don't we? <laughs> Well, I want to tell you that for a moment, that when that dummy spoke, I thought that in some horrible, incredible way, Bertie was telling the truth, because I swear that although by this time Bertie was on his feet, the dummy was still sprawled in the chair where Bertini had put him. They were a couple of yards apart. Bertie never touched it, that I'm sure of. But when the dummy spoke, I swear... By everything that's holy, that I saw the dummy's jaw move. Bertie picked up the dummy and he stormed out of the office. But not before I noticed that there were tears in his eyes. Yes, tears. And not the Latin tears of rage that one might have expected. He was crying. The silent sort of lost tears of complete hopelessness. Oh, I felt bad, I can tell you. I didn't know what to think. It was impossible that somehow Gino, the dummy, could have a mind of its own. It was, a, it was impossible that the dummy could walk and talk. It was impossible. But it seemed to be true. So the next night, I watched the act again. And again, the girl was in it. And again, it went like a bomb. I went round backstage after the show, and I knocked on Bertie's dressing room. I knocked, and Gino answered. Wow! <laughs> Come in. Ah, come in, Mr. Manager. Now, listen, Bertie. Yeah. What's this? Who goes on? Close the door. Bertie won't be long. Yeah, where... Where's Bertie? <laughs> You, Mr. Manager. I won't be long. I'm washing my hands. Wait a moment, please. Yes. There is uh, something I can do for him, maybe. Now, but Tilly, you were in there? Oh, well, I see. I thought I was going around the bend. He spoke to you. Gino spoke to you, eh? Now, perhaps you'll believe me. <laughs> believe you? Now, look, Bertie, look, don't try and get me believing the impossible. Any good ventriloquist like yourself could throw his voice from the washroom to in here. Look, that doesn't mean a thing. But, but don't you see? What? Ah, he's so cunning, this one. You'll see what he does. <laughs> you see, he talks to you when he knows that you would think it is me doing the talking. You, you little... I will kill you. Take that. Now wait a second, I hate you again, you monster. 
God, will you stop that? You're making me think I'm going mad. It was brilliant ventriloquist work. I mean, he was hitting the dummy and making the cry of pain himself, of course. But it made me feel sick somehow. It, at least, that's what I thought was happening at the time. But today, I don't know anymore. The show that night was the last one that Bettini ever did. And it was nothing short of brilliant. I watched from the wings, and once or twice I could have sworn that Bertie and Gino spoke at the same time. Impossible, of course. But once or twice... Anyway, they had a real set to on the stage over this girl. Oh, it brought the house down. And once again, after the show, I went round to his dressing room. This time, the door was open. And before I went inside, I stood for a while listening. In a way, I wish I hadn't. But I stood there and listened. You heard what I said. I quit. I'm a finish to the act. I'm through. That's all right with me. Monster, go. See if you can get somebody else to put up with your nonsense like I do. You don't think I'll have any difficulty getting another job, do you? It's you that's going to have trouble. They drill Christa to a penny. But where are you going to find another dummy like me? A dummy that does all the work for you. You going to be sorry, Bertie. I can't go on like this. You're driving me mad. That's what you're doing. You're driving me mad. Why can't you be like the other dolls? Why can't you? I can't help the way I am. None of us can help that. And well, enough is enough. There's only one of us in here. That boss is me. <laughs> hurt me. I am the boss. I tell you do as I say or the act is finished. I don't care, Gino. I'm warning you, I don't care. I've made enough money. I'll retire. And what will you do with me? You. I'll lock you up inside your suitcase. I'll leave you in the cloakroom at the station. That's what I'll do. You, you wouldn't dare. Oh, yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> You're frightened now, aren't you? That's good. For too many years, I've been the one who has been frightened. Now it's your turn. <laughs> yes. You are frightened. So, you would stop me in a suitcase and put me in the station. Well, listen to me, Percy. That wouldn't do you any good, you see. Sooner I take there, even in five years' time, someone would open that gate and I would still be there. You can't starve me to death or suffocate me, you know. Even after ten years, I would still be there. And once they open that gate again, I would find you. I would find you. You couldn't. Lord of me at all. Yes. That's what we want people to think, isn't it? But you are a doll. I made you myself. I carved your face and I stuffed your legs and arms with newspaper. I know it's impossible. What you are saying is impossible. <laughs> you are a doll. A dummy. I'm not a frightened of a dummy. <laughs> then if you're not frightened, why are you shouting like that? I refuse to talk with you any longer. Shut up. The matter is a clause. I've made up my mind. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shut up! I'd, I'd heard enough. I wanted to walk away and leave him to it. Something prompted me to push the door open and walk in. The dummy was propped in a chair in front of the dressing room mirror, and by some chance, the way he'd been put there, it looked as if he was leaning on his elbows. Bertino was striding up and down the room like a man possessed. I don't know what I was going to say to him. I suppose in the back of my mind somewhere was the thought that I'd better start to calm him down. I stood just inside the doorway, my glance going from 
Bertini to the dummy. Bertini never noticed me. But to this day, I swear that that dummy looked me straight in the eye through that dressing room mirror and laughed. (laughs) That's right. Go on. Laugh. Make the most of your laugh. Because, my friend, I tell you, this is the last time you laugh. <laughs> I made you myself. I know what you are. You are a nothing. So does strike. That's what you are. I made you myself. And because I made you, I've got the right to finish you. I'm going to finish you. You hear me? I'm going to finish you. <laughs> He took three strides and knocked the dummy sprawling from the chair. I watched, horror-stricken, as Bertie lifted his leg and with the heel of his right boot pounded again and again into that dummy's wooden face. You don't believe me, monster. <laughs> you didn't believe me. No, maybe you'll believe me when it's too late. I kill you. I kill you. I kill you. <laughs> Bettini has made you. Bettini gave you life. And Bettini takes it away. <laughs> come on, Bertie. Now, come on, old man. Look, you. I think you've done the right thing. It was only a dummy. Look, come along with me. Come on, you need a rest. They, they had to put him away, of course. As a matter of fact, he's still there. Yes, he's still in the sanatorium. I went to see him about five years back, but never again. I shall remember that to my dying day. I went inside that little private room, and he was propped up in bed. He lay there quite motionless, his eyes staring fixedly at the ceiling. And When I spoke to him, it took a second for him to answer. And then, only his bottom jaw moved... As he said, It was good of you to come and see me, senior manager. But don't worry about me. I'm fine. doesn't know if he's Arthur or Martha. And we have a problem, too. We're not quite sure who this dummy is that we have here behind the creaking door. in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. This is your host back again. Just a reminder of our rendezvous next week. Where are we going? Through the creaking door? Of course. (laughs) The manufacturers of State Express 3.5's Filter King cigarettes 
invite you to listen next Saturday at 9 o'clock when they will again present... The Creaking...